Yeah, now the time is 9.32 here. There are still candidates joining. So, so far it's just 36 that have joined with us. Shall we start or would you like to wait another minute or two? How is it? Uh, up to you guys how you want to do this. I'm like, if you are expecting more people, be happy to wait for more two to three minutes. I think there's no rush for that. Okay. Am I right, Frank? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Then we'll just give you another two to three minutes. Then. No, that's okay. That's completely fine. That's why we are here today to have okay. more and more to join and listen us. Okay, so let's start with today's webinar. We have 40 already joined with us and I think more will join. So good morning to everyone and thank you for joining here with us today. So welcome to Winstone's Overseas Student Recruitment. I would like to take the opportunity and introduce our company that involves in hospitality trade for nearly two decades. We have been operating in the overseas recruitment for the past five years. So we offer comprehensive courses in various disciplines. We are linked with both international and national institutes to verify the recognition of our courses. Our academy is equipped with state of the arts facilities and highly experienced personnel to impart knowledge on all students. So who have, um, this would benefit those who want to fulfill a career in hospitality and the service industry. So Winstone has the experience in handling the applicants educational and professional qualifications following the procedure of the ideal student visa recruitment for the particular candidate. We will need to discuss qualifications and the other criteria that you will need to obtain um, and see if you have the correct educational or working experience for that relevant field. Winstone Overseas Student Recruitment provides high quality services for agreeable prices. So we would like to offer our services of our company to you. So we are not uh, only going to talk about the hospital trade today. We have Choose New Zealand team up with us and they will be um, talking about the programs available for you today, the different degree levels and all of that. 
So before um, I hand it over to them, I would like to share a couple of videos with you and then we can proceed. Our world is changing and our world needs new because new doesn't just think about the world's problems, it cares. New acts boldly to solve challenges but never forgets the importance of people. It just opens my eyes to a much wider opportunities. New is prepared for today and ready to create tomorrow. I learn about identity, about myself. New welcomes open minds and different perspectives. The thing that surprised me the most is the diversity of Gosho here. New is progressive and never stops learning. Qualifications in New Zealand are recognized worldwide. New is the problem solvers, the go-getters, the innovators, the big thinkers. New is a New Zealand education and new is what the world needs. All right, um, so let me introduce our panel to you. From Choose New Zealand, we have Mr. Frank. He is the Director of the Marketing and Operations um, in Choose New Zealand. And then we have Mr. Hamid, the Business Development Manager. And we have Mr. Allen, he is the Licensed Immigration Advisor. So they will be speaking to you very soon. I just would like to remind you, if you have any concerns during their presentation, you can type it in the chat box. So at the end of their presentation, we'll have a Q&A uh, segment where you can um, willingly speak up and talk to them directly, or you can either send in your questions through the chat box as well. So um, I would like to hand it over to Mr. Frank. Right, thank you, Michelle. I will start or we'll start sharing my screen and we can have our presentation. All right. Can you oh, publish? Can you guys see the screen now? It's yes, Frank, we can see. Yep. Great. Tina Tato and uh, my name is Frank, as what Michelle introduced, I'm the Director of Marketing and Operations at Novo Education and Choose New Zealand. Uh, we are a New Zealand and Auckland based education and immigration consultancy. And today we're very happy uh, to be invited uh, to give this presentation and to introduce New Zealand in general and the New Zealand education system. So um, very good morning for everyone who uh, joined this presentation and uh, we're really happy to go through the whole journey with you. And if you have any question, please leave in the uh, chat box or we're going to have a Q&A session uh, at the end of our presentation. So right, so I will start um, by introducing our team. Uh, as what I just said, our brand Choose New Zealand is basically um, as a, a international um, brand organized by Nova Education, um, focusing on promoting New Zealand education and immigration solutions. 
and we have a strong team from very multicultural backgrounds, and we operate in very um, strongly in many different countries. And we have actually um, four immigration advisors, when the, the, not on this picture, but we have four immigration advisors, and we have a strong team in all different markets. Right, so you probably come here today, want to know uh, more about New Zealand, and by sitting in Sri Lanka, and I believe you have many, many options. Uh, you may thinking about UK, US, Australia, and other European countries maybe, and all New Zealand. So I want to start by telling you more about New Zealand, and why, do you sh why should you consider to study here? Because New Zealand is number one in the world for many different reasons. We are number one to prepare students for the future, we are number one. Um, we are number one on the at the education system. Although many of you may heard about those Ivy League colleges or university in the U.S., but uh, in terms of education system, uh, New Zealand is a very highly regarded internationally. And uh, New Zealand is also the least corrupted country, and uh, with very high human freedom, and with many people from uh, different countries. Those are uh, something. Um, we very uh, treasure and we very admire. And New Zealand has lots of different, uh, many um, strong aspects on the strong uh, social progress and by many different magazines and different awards. New Zealand has been awarded as the greatest country or the most popular country to travel and visit. So yeah, that's just a very, you know, flattering um, beginning. I want to tell you all about New Zealand's, um, why we sh you should consider New Zealand to study, and a little bit more about New Zealand. Uh, as you may know, New Zealand is an island nation in the South Pacific. We uh, are like um, formed by two main islands, and the size is similar as the size of UK, Japan, or Italy. Many people think New Zealand is a small country, but also think UK is a big country. Actually, land land mass, um, actually, we are the similar size. Um, at the moment, we probably having, we, t we say is, uh, at the moment we have 5 million people. New Zealand currently have 5 million as the population, and English as the main language to speak. We also have uh, Maori, our uh, Tilo Maori, which is the indigenous language, and sign language as our official languages. Uh, New Zealand has very mild uh, weather, and um, if for, for people from some area, I haven't been traveling in Sri Lanka. I guess in my mind, Sri Lanka is a, bit, a more tropical and, and a warmer temperature. If you come to New Zealand, you can have a good sense of four seasons. But for people from more um, extreme uh, condition, uh, weather condition, New Zealand weather considered as very mild and very comfortable, especially um, like for me, my hometown in China, the winter has very big snow and very minus degrees, but in New Zealand you wouldn't really uh, experience that unless you go to the mountain areas. And as what I said, the our company is based in Auckland, and uh, you may have heard Auckland um, a lot if you're mentioning about New Zealand, and Auckland is the New Zealand largest city. It's about 1.7 million and uh, maybe more at the moment. And uh, we are not the capital, but we are the largest city, uh, similar as uh, many other countries, such as like New York is the largest public city in the US, but Washington DC is their capital. So it's a similar idea. And um, traditionally it was uh, very much uh, during the colonization period, lots of British, um, but um, because the large migration, and over the past decades, we have um, people from all, all around the world. Lots of um, people from China, India, Sri Lanka, uh, Philippines, and uh, many other different nations. So Auckland is considered as the, probably one of the most uh, greatest um, migration and uh, multicultural city. So yeah, it's a very uh, lovely city to live in. Um, but it's not the only city you should choose and focus. 
I just give you a, nap, a Snapchat of, uh, of this um, bigger city. Next, I will move on to talk about the New Zealand education. So give a very quick summary because there are lots of things on the slides. You don't have to read everything and lots of things about schooling. My understanding is today we have um, lots of students may focus on um, level four or five tertiary level or even master. So I'll probably skip later for the schooling part. So New Zealand schools uh, have 13 years. I believe it's similar as Sri Lanka system. 13 years from primary school to uh, secondary school to graduate. I move on, uh, New Zealand has three years bachelor degree with very wide different um, academic subjects. And uh, the first year is normally is more wide and open, and then uh, students focus on more narrow uh, air subjects and or major, what we call. And New Zealand, um, basically the whole system is monitored and controlled by the government. So the New Zealand government is very strict on how the education system should run and how to run. So it's very high quality in that regard. We don't have very um, large uh, private education, but we do have very many uh, private institutions to choose from. But the government is in control in most of everything, as all the aspects. And if you are international students, of course, you can choose in New Zealand, we have eight governments like we call public universities only eight okay compared to many other countries i believe in australia there are more more than 40 in other countries there are probably hundreds and thousands but in new zealand there are only eight universities and we also have 17 what would he call as institutes of technology and polytechnic itp and traditionally we have 17 and now the, the government trying to merge all 17 into one. The name is um, Tipunikana and the New Zealand Institution of Skills and Technology. The merging is still ongoing, so you will still hear many of the names such as WITT, EIT, those are the names um, still there, still those uh, individual uh, ITPs, but uh, in the future they'll be all merged into one big body. And of course they are over 300 secondary schools, 100 primary schools, and many uh, few hundred um, private schools and institutions. And as what I said, Auckland is the biggest city, but if you go to visit any other small towns uh, in New Zealand, you will feel very warm welcome because people were more welcoming and people more communal compared to the uh, population in the bigger cities. So I'll break down into different parts. The first one I'll touch on a little bit of the primary and secondary schooling. As what I said is from year one to year 13, from primary, um, maybe I have a point uh, from primary, secondary um, or intermediate and until the secondary finish. And the NCEA is the uh, New Zealand system, have level one to level three. I believe most people here are not listening to the schooling, so I'll skip that. And yeah, there are many different types of schools. I'll probably skip the schooling part too. For the tertiary system, so the tertiary means you, after the secondary school, you move on to your uh, sub degree or degree level. So we have something called NZQF. Which is, con is under control, which is in New Zealand qualifications framework work. It's monitored and managed by NZQA. You may hear in the future lots about NZQA level four, NZQA level five. That's all um, to do with here. It's all levels. So it's a level from level one to level 10. Normally you wouldn't really do level one or two. That should be considered as secondary schooling. Uh, until level three, that's probably the NCEO, NCEA level three equivalent. After that, from the tertiary um, education, you will start to do level four and move on from there. So normally we'll have a level four, which is the certificate, level five diploma, level six diploma, and the level seven diploma. In the meantime, 
Your bachelor degree also considered as level seven because the bachelor includes level uh, four, five, six, and seven in that three years of study. So level seven, that's a milestone. You should remember this level seven is a bachelor or equivalent. After level seven, we consider that as postgraduates. OK, so postgraduates include level eight, which is postgraduate diploma, and level nine, which is master. Or could be the master is two years, including postgraduate and master. Then the highest level will be the doctor, PhD level. That's level 10. Very simple, level 1 to 10, 10 is doctor, and then you count backwards. OK, so this is the levels of um, New Zealand education uh, qualifications. When you consider the tertiary institutions, you normally consider, you can consider as two parts. The first is the public. So public, we have universities, which, we, which I have mentioned. There's more academic focus. And also we have polytechnics, the ITPs. Those are more vocational focus. Both of them have bachelor degrees, master degrees, all the qualifications, similar type of qualification, but the focus are slightly different. Of course, the fees will be different too. University are, tend to be more expensive, and ITPs, so like polytechnics, are a little bit cheaper or more affordable. And uh, they all have big campuses, you know, like uh, facilities, good facilities, uh, many different, uh, many domestic students as your peers, and uh, lots of academic staff. Uh, normally, they are doctors, graduate, and then become an academic staff and focus on research. So very, very much uh, over on the uh, university level, but also polytechnics too. Apart from the public sector, we also have private sectors too. So private sector uh, in New Zealand, we call it PTE. Um, it's called private training establishments. Those are mainly the city campuses uh, focused on like such as Auckland. Probably Auckland has the most um, private uh, institutions, PTEs, and the other big cities. They are more vocational focus. They are they are probably more uh, international students because those PTEs are focused on to bring international students to New Zealand and teach them something, um, meet the skill shortage in New Zealand and help them to establish and move on to work and settle in New Zealand. So many good options, but at the same time, you need to be aware um, not everyone is the, is the same level, you know. So um, that's why as the Immigration and Education Agency here, and we work with uh, Winston, and we together can help you identify what's the best option. Because the time to time, there are some not very bad players, uh, not very good players, I would say, uh, in the market, uh, which are not very providing good quality uh, education. But in general, New Zealand has a very strong and high quality education and a very robust uh, monitoring system. So you don't need to worry about that too much. But at the same time, you need, do need to work with. Of course, we also have English uh, studies. I guess uh, most of students here, you don't need and do the English, you probably should already finish your English study uh, in Sri Lanka, meet the English criteria, so I'll just move on. And programs. Um, what I have talked about, those are the institutions. And to do with programs, of course, those are schooling, different programs. Focus on the um, tertiary qualification. We have diplomas, level five, level six, level seven, those and level six and um, postgraduate plan. Those are all diplomas. We also have bachelor's and uh, uh, bachelor degrees. That's all called degree. And we have graduate diploma. It's also level seven. Very good program and uh, normally, um, which is a level seven and it's designed and developed by, uh, by the universities and polytechnics for people. There is a bachelor degree who want to move to another area or another major that normally that you need to do a graduate diploma. And then if you have a bachelor and you want to do a postgraduate study, then you can start to do your postgraduate diploma or master degree or PhD. Areas, of course, they're similar in all different countries, like 
we have like business, we have management, dance, accounting, IT, nursing, you can't, that's, you know, countless different areas. Okay, so I guess uh, there I can see uh, people already asking questions about different areas. We'll come back on the program you can choose from. Okay, so the tertiary course, the entry requirements. One thing is very uh, important to know is the English. Okay, so English requirements uh, should be straightforward and easy to understand. Basically, if you want to study level five, you level five uh, diplomas, you need to have IELTS 5.5 and no uh, band lower than five. Move on from level six to level seven, you need IELTS level uh, IELTS point, uh, six points or equivalent and no band lower than uh, 5.5. So those small bands uh, can be 0.5 lower than the main general band, okay? And the level eight, Above, you need a level point, uh, five. Uh, sorry, six point five. Sometimes you may need to have seven if you are teaching nursing some uh, special subjects. You need higher else or equivalent. Okay, New Zealand do accept all the other options like a uh, TOEFL, PTE, with the PSM, and uh, all the different. There's a big list of options. Okay, so you, if you haven't done else, or if you can't do else, or if you hate doing else. And there are always alternatives. And academic uh, entry requirements, normally there are different levels, require different uh, your ad academic background. So very um, case by case. And so we, the, our team and Winston, we together will help you to tell you what program needs what academic backgrounds. I can't really tell you blanket kind of rules here. So next will be something you probably very, um, want to know more details is about the study work and live pathway. For this slide, I will invite my colleague Ellen. Ellen is our um, licensed immigration advisor. I didn't touch on that too much before, but basically in New Zealand, if you want to apply a visa, of course you can apply yourself. But if you want someone to help you, you either find a lawyer, normally are very expensive, or you find a licensed immigration advisor such as that uh, similar as Ellen, what Ellen can do for you. So Ellen, do you mind to um, break down of the work rights um, and tell people a little bit more about that? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll just uh, quickly go through the the, the, the pathway. Um, so for the students, um, obviously uh, there's a requirement to study full time. Uh, but there's also a right to work part time um, during semesters and full time during holidays for certain courses. Um, most courses, like the, the type of courses that that Frank has just been talking about, they will um, have uh, the right to work um, 20 hours per week during the semester and full time during uh, scheduled vacations and and public holidays. Um, uh, after that, uh, after you complete the course, uh, you will have uh, the right to uh, post-study work visa, which is uh, what we call an open work visa. It allows employment in any occupation uh, for any employer. A person can switch employers or they can just choose one and, and, and work for that one employer for the whole time. The duration is um, uh, one to three years, so either one year or three years. It depends on the level of the course, um, so for levels four to six, um, Frank was talking about the New Zealand qualifications framework. So lower level courses, uh, courses at level four to six would give you a one year visa. Um, diplomas and graduate diplomas at level seven also would give you a one year visa. If you're talking about the university level, so bachelors and postgraduate, uh, they can have a three year visa and those allow, as I said, uh, employment in any occupation. Obviously, you can work full time. Uh, after the end of the post study work visa, hopefully the um, just a former student would have a career in New Zealand and they can apply under what's called an essential skills work visa. Um, again, without going into too many details, it is restricted to one employer, uh, but um, that can be up to three years and can be renewed as many times as uh, necessary. And um, finally, the um, ultimate goal is the resident visa, which allows uh, the holder to stay in New Zealand indefinitely and uh, work and study, uh, basically having similar rights to a New Zealand citizen. 
but mm -hmm. it is a pathway we have helped a lot of students in the past. They came from overseas on a student visa, went to post study, essential skills, and finally they got residence. Um, we were very happy to, to um, kind of guide them through that pathway right from the uh, trip overseas right up to their becoming New Zealand residents. Yeah, thank you, Ellen. Yeah, exactly. And after resident visa, and that will be the permanent resident visa, right, Ellen? And uh, yeah, that's... sorry. That's, that's, uh, yes, I mean the, there is a uh, what's called the resident visa and permanent resident visa. There's a certain uh, nuances, but the important thing is that um, once you hold the, the resident visa, later on you can get what's called a permanent resident visa, and this is um, held for life. Um, if the holder was to leave New Zealand uh, for 10, 20 years, they could later come back and um, you know just uh, continue living in New Zealand as if they had never left. So it is quite a powerful um, uh, visa uh, yeah. because it does last uh, your entire life, the permanent resident visa. Yeah, and uh, no entry requirements, no limits on how, how long you're going to live in New Zealand. That's very unique. That's so far still the only one uh, in the world can can do this basically permanently you can return um you have the return right somewhere i think i think i, I saw a um, question pop up they asked the uh, age limits i think um maybe ellen you can quickly mention the age limit for the resident visa that's the only part you have age limit um yeah for the resident visa i mean uh, under the current rules the rules are kind of sub are going to be changed soon but i can only speak about current policy um, that the applicant cannot be older than 55 when they apply for residence. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly that's uh, what Alan just mentioned is 55. That's the only visa you may have an age limit and you can work out backwards uh, if you want to. If you are older slightly um, in, in terms of uh, your age, um, yeah, you, you want to count all the years of study and work and so you don't want to uh, start too late. All right. Um, yeah, I, I actually forgot to uh, draw a little arrow here. So yeah, basically they are both pathways. You people may apply resident visa while they are still on the post study work visa, or they move on. They use uh, essential skills first, work visa first, and then to do the resident visa. Okay. Thank you, uh, Alan. And uh, I'll just move on my presentation. Okay. Accommodation choices there are many, and they are homestay. And of course, the hostel you can rent uh, for, of course, for most of our kids, the students here, probably adults, you can, of course, rent your own um, uh, house. And in New Zealand, um, we all have uh, every single um, potential in institution has their job uh, uh, program or uh, job search program. So you don't have to ask us about oh, how we're going to find a job when you come here. The school will help you and to help you on your CVs, your interview skills, everything. But of course, you need to seek for help too. Sometimes if you just sit there, they think they have you have no issue. They wouldn't just come to you or keep asking questions. OK, and uh, as what Ellen just mentioned, everyone who study, well, not everyone, but most people study tertiary students can work up to 20 uh, hours per week. At the moment, New Zealand minimum uh, adult wage is $20 New Zealand dollars per hour. And uh, oops. Um, that's, I think I just searched and checked it's uh, Sri Lanka rupee. Uh, it's probably 2,833. That's per hour hourly rate as a minimum. You can time 20, but many people actually not only get minimum, they probably getting 25 or whatever, depends on their job. Uh, if you as a student, you may work as a more of a casual or more of um, hospitality uh, jobs. New Zealand's very short of uh, hospitality workers, so you're probably surprised um, the the uh, restaurant canteens can't open because they don't have enough staff. And uh, normally, because uh, we rely on visitors or travelers to do that job, so when the border, especially not uh, closed, we don't even have enough waiters. Okay, so um, so that's when you are studying, you can work, and after you graduate, uh, you uh, school will help you to find jobs. And uh, of course, that's not guaranteed, so no one can guarantee like jobs or work, uh, everything. But uh, there's always support and help available. Last 
thing I want to mention in my part is the COVID situation in New Zealand and the border policy. And currently, uh, New Zealand has a community trans transaction and uh, transmission of, of COVID, uh, but uh, New Zealand's vaccination rate is getting higher and higher. We are about to get, uh, we already passed 90% of eligible population, uh, basically single vaccinated, about 80% double vaccinated. And uh, at the moment, you may know Auckland is still in kind of a lockdown, and we can't, uh, lots of places can't be opened. But very soon, by the end of this month, everything should go, well, not go back to normal, but uh, most of the places can open because of the high vaccination rates. And the travel uh, within New Zealand will be allowed in December. And uh, we, what we are guessing, and the New Zealand government has indicated by early next year, they will start to allow people uh, self-quarantine at home. And first of all, there will be New Zealanders to return in New Zealand and all people who hold a visa. At the moment, New Zealand border is still close to non-citizens or residents. So students can't travel to New Zealand at the moment, but we believe in 2022 and by the probably mid of 2022, there should be more positive news about the um, border reopen for uh, international students. And the Minister, Minister of uh, Education also mentioned something about that. OK, so that's uh, New Zealand border policy and COVID situation. And my colleague Hamid will tell you something more about the, some programs we uh, would recommend you guys to consider. And uh, consider of the time, yeah, Hamid, maybe we can quickly go through the list of you, what you have done and you can share your screen uh, from me. Sure, thank you, Frank. And uh... Hello everybody, hello from New Zealand. This is Harmeet, I'm a business development manager at Nova Education. So I look after all the courses, admissions and uh, academic and English requirements part for the particular courses. I can see some questions about age limit and all of that. So these kind of uh, questions, uh, I'm the one who generally answer if that relates to the educational part, which I'll come on that later. Well, um, I need to start with the sharing the screen, but uh, sorry, uh, uh, Nova team, I am unable to uh, share a screen here. That option is blocked for me. Can you see uh, it now? I stopped pre presenting. No, I can't. Uh, Manishi, uh, are yeah. you uh, sharing something? No, hang on. let me see. Uh, yeah, I can make you a presenter. Yeah, I got right. it. Cool. Thank you. Um, let me share the screen first. OK, so um, all right, so I'm going to talk about about five institutions here. I will start with the one which is the most popular. So um, since everybody is aware that the borders is currently closed and what this we can offer to the international students is that they can start studying online for some time for now until the border is going to be normal and then they can continue their study uh, back in New Zealand. That is a very fantastic option and why you should choose. I let you know guys that recently Ministry of Education announced 1000 international students to come and study inside New Zealand from March next year and the process has already been started. A lot of our students are getting that nomination because they've been studying online. So they are getting the priority to come and study inside New Zealand. So if you really would like to come here in and really would like to focus on New Zealand, so then you should consider uh, starting your studies online from offshore. I understand a lot of people do feel that uh, why we do online, this is a bit boring. And But actually this is now getting more, uh, um, I mean like, ex, uh, more serious and more attractive option for international students because they're going to get priority to come to New Zealand rather than those who have not started anything yet and they're just waiting for the border to open. So this is something you should consider. So I'll start with the uh, first uh, a very much popular option among international students. This is for the information technology and management students. So the institution named WITT, which is a public institute, in the region of Taranaki in New Zealand. They are actually offering uh, two courses online, which is the year one of a bachelor degree, actually. 
So the first course is an Indian diploma in business in leadership and management level five, and another is a diploma in web development and design. So one is for management, and another is for IT. And this leads to the bachelor's of applied management, and another one leads to the bachelor's of IT. So as uh, Alan earlier mentioned, and uh, I would like to tell you one very exciting thing that these both programs comes under long term skill shortage of New Zealand, which means. Um, these two uh, uh, people from these two fields are really needed in New Zealand. That's the first thing. Second thing, it is a very great opportunity for those. If you are married, you can bring your partners with you. And it's, uh, am I right, Alan? Uh, yes, you are right. That's right. Um, so courses at level seven and higher, the partner can come here on a work visa. Yeah, especially these two courses since they come under long term skill shortage. Am I right? That's correct. Correct. So uh, it's always good to confirm with your licensed immigration advisor because he is the one who can tell you what comes under long term and what not. So these two programs come under long term skill shortage. So what do you guys have to do? You need to start from the level five. Uh, if you have done your A levels in Sri Lanka and you hold IELTS 5.5 overall, no less than five in each module, you can take this course. And there is no visa required to start your studies online. You can just straight away start. Intakes is intake is every month, and so there is no problem starting this program. And the, another part of this program is that the course fees for one year is this, this diploma is only five thousand two hundred fifty dollar. So I think uh, they are giving you around fifteen thousand dollars scholarship. Generally, the fees for this kind of program for, is twenty thousand dollar in inside New Zealand. So you can do it in five thousand two hundred fifty dollar. You can start it, and then you can uh, start your year two here in New Zealand and continue to year three and get your post study work visa for three years. But now a lot of people, you might have a question that what if the border open while you're starting this diploma? If that happens, you can continue your, your diploma itself here and then you move on to year two and three. So a lot of students who are getting this nomination in the recent uh, announcement, they have already been studying this diploma. They have done two papers and they're now going to continue their third or fourth paper inside New Zealand from March. So they with this uh, way, they have cut their living cost. They have cut their fee. So they are on a very much uh, uh, financially. They are really beneficial. They save their time as well as money. So um, I will move on. These are the course contents here of these two programs. Uh, I, I can share these uh, uh, slides later on with the uh, Manishi and she can share it with you guys that what is in there. So the highlights are you can start year one. In a diploma uh, courses leading to the bachelor degrees in only $5,250 for now. And then uh, you can also bring your partners because the programs can, comes under long term skill shortage later when you start your bachelor's degree. And the requirement is, and there is an academic requirement, you just have to have A level passed with 50% uh, marks. And then you also need IELTS 5.5, no less than five in each module. This is specifically for those students who have done their A levels. If you have done your O levels, we can still have a look at your application if you are coming with some sort of work experience. All right, so I will move on to the next programs which are popular. Uh, OK, so there is another school named UB, which is a private institute, and they are offering three programs. Uh, the first one is Bachelors of Software Engineering uh, with the four specializations, cybersecurity, cloud engineering, and game development as well as artificial intelligence. Apart from that, they have bachelors of animation and UB certificate of creative media. So uh, these three programs are also uh, very popular inside New Zealand and again comes under long term skill shortage. So which is again a very popular option for those who really would like to get into the software engineering or animation or the creative media part. So again, uh, you guys can start this program from offshore and then can continue this program in New Zealand once the border open or if there is any announcement further for more international students to come and start this study under special exception. So um, I will quickly go through these two flyers here, which is about bachelors of animation. Um, this is for those students who really would like to get into the 2D and 3D character animation, or they are really very much interested into the media design, game developments, these kind of stuff. 
and so the entry requirement is again you can start with o level or a levels a levels is fine o levels you need to have some experience and you must be 18 years old and you have to have six bands no less than 5.5 in each because this is a straight bachelor's degree and you can also have toefl or pte any other english exam language cert cambridge english we have a heaps of options except ielts to start with and the another program the one i mentioned before is bachelor's of software engineering that is again for those who are interested in cloud computing cyber security games development or artificial intelligence this also comes under long term skill shortage of new zealand you will get the same benefits of bringing your partners and all you need to have your a levels with ielts 6 no less than 5.5 with 50% to 60% marks and you can see the salaries uh, you can get uh, i think there's an internet issue can you guys hear me Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can. Hear. Sorry about that. This is a bad internet connection. So uh, you can see the software developer working as a contractors inside New Zealand can earn around eighty to hundred dollar per hour, which is I think quite a high salary. You can work in any of these fields, being being a interaction designer, Unity developer, engine developer, virtual world architect, etc. So we can talk about this in more detail once you will have a more. Uh, questions or you really would like to go ahead with the application you can uh, talk to winstone team and uh, they can uh, actually get in touch for more uh, details about these programs you can anybody who is not able to meet these two bachelor degrees direct entry they can start with a certificate of creative media for now which is a level 4 program and which makes things quite easier for those who would like to get into the animation degree but they are not really meeting the requirements now they can with this level four diploma, they can meet the all the requirements and they can straight get to do their bachelors of animation. So this is from UB and uh, because we have a short time frame, I'll quickly talk about EIT. EIT is an Eastern Institute of Technology based in Oakland and Hawke's Bay. They do offer master's degree, PG diplomas and PG certificates. So those who are holding a bachelor's degree with IELTS 6.5 no less than six band in each can start PG certificate leading to PG diploma and then they can also continue to master's degree and they can get three years post study work visa. They have a heaps of options here. So starting from bus wine business and innovation, this is the only institute who actually do the studies related to the wine business and innovation inside New Zealand except universities. And they do have applied management, business analytics, digital business, which is very popular these days for the marketing people, information technology. They have a supply chain management who uh, people who are working in the uh, supply chain industry, they would like to go through the procurement management or project management. They can look at the PG diploma, PG certificate or a master's program. And people who do not want to get into the nursing, but still would like to go into the health program, they can consider PG certificate in health science or PG diploma or masters in health science. So uh, this is all from Eastern Institute of Technology. And last but not the least, I think a lot of people will have a question that can they apply without IELTS? I'm sure that a lot of students will have this question. So the answer to that actually, yes, and no. <laughs> so how? No, because you have to have any English um, exam or a certificate. If you're not interested to do IELTS or finding it difficult to get the score, you can join this program, which is online program from you can join from offshore. There is no visa required for this. And you can see they are offering some scholarship as well. This is a bit outdated, but the current scholarship is around $1,200 uh, $1, at the moment. And this is known as New Zealand Certificate of English Language. So what happens if you do this course at level four here? The level four will lead to equivalent to IELTS six bands, no less than IELTS 5.5 in each. Once you have done this program, you can straight away get into those programs like level seven diploma or a level six diploma or a bachelor's degree. You don't need IELTS or PTE after this program. And we also have a level five New Zealand Certificate of English Language, which will be for 
those students who are looking at masters or pg studies because their ielts requirement is 6.5 no less than 6 in each so this level 5 program will help you to get into that uh, uh, ielts 6.5 no less than 6 band band score requirement you can meet this requirement with this program so for those who do not want to do ielts or pt they can actually start working on this course and they can do it from offshore once they are done and by then the border opens they might just straight away apply the student visa application into bachelor's or any other diploma which which fits this english requirement they can just straight away start this this is very very important thing i i thought i should share with you guys so uh, another last institution is toyo homai which is in rotorua region offering courses online courses starting in business administration business management and the very important one is cookery the culinary arts you can actually start this program offshore you can do some papers offshore those theory papers which are not practical you can start studying those and then once the border open you can come here and continue your further study to get your post study work visa the another one is healthcare they have a very popular programs for example if you have done your bachelor's of nursing or bachelor's of health science back in sri lanka you can start thinking about grad diploma in infection risk management or you can also work on health and rehabilitation let me tell you something guys the healthcare is a very popular industry in this country at the moment and according to the government pay equity scheme the minimum pay healthcare workers are getting is 27 dollar per hour which is minimum employer have to pay that amount because this is forced by the ministry of health so this is a rule in this um, country for those who are working in healthcare so for those who are not able to get seven each band to be nurse they can actually look at this level 7 program you only need il 6 no less than 5.5 in each and you have, can have a very good career being a healthcare worker and further things alan will later introduce you how you can get onto post study work visa and your residence options to stay permanently in this country if you if you will be qualifying for that Mm. All right, so that's all from me, guys. Um, yeah. If you will have any questions regarding your uh, academic part, your entry requirements, I will be happy to answer. And I will um, hand over it back to Frank. I think yes. uh, this is this is all from me. Thank you. I think I've been very it's... fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You try really hard. Um, before we start answering the questions, I just want to um, quickly. Show you guys about uh, one last um, program, which is from the IPU. IPU um, is a Japanese university, but in New Zealand is a private institution called IPU New Zealand. They have a master degree, which is the research-based master. Normally, it's two years. Um, it's always two years, and it's called a Master of Contemporary International Studies. At the moment, you can study the whole year one at home with a scholarship. The fee will be lowered to ten thousand five hundred fifty New Zealand dollars. Very, very cheap. No, no other program I can see even uh, level four or five can be like this cheap. Um, but the second year, uh, you come to New Zealand to do your research. And uh, for research-based um, master, another good thing is the students while they're doing the research, they can work for full time. Of course, you need to manage your time wisely. And uh, but that's an uh, option. Uh, so this is also a very good uh, option for people with a bachelor degree want to move on to this accept any background uh, students and uh, because they are very wide um, topic and you can study many different uh, areas you can be more like a business more of uh, politics um different uh, research areas so okay so this is the last one i we would like to um, basically introduce to everyone and um, that's our uh, presentation I can see there are lots of questions. Sorry, Hamid. Uh, Frank, I can quickly answer these questions. I think because we might be running a, a short time, yeah. but uh, I can quickly answer. And I would like to. Uh, I think anybody who have been asking, if you really would like to know more, you can ask now. And uh, uh, I will start from the first question. So I think uh, uh, the first question is from Anuradha. Hi, Anuradha. I am going to answer your question now. So. she is asking that she is having a civil engineering degree and age is 39 and she have more than 10 years experience in the field of construction surveying can apply for masters anuradha yes you definitely can apply for masters as long as 
you are holding a bachelor's degree in a related field and you hold IELTS 6.5, no less than six band in each module. There is no age limit as long as you have statement of purpose explaining why you want to do this program and how it will help you in your future. That is very important. What is your intention? And you can definitely start looking at the options. But I think um, if you're looking at the civil engineering, we have a lot of options available in the uni uh, New Zealand universities as well as in some of the polytechnics. So for that, you please uh, uh, get in uh, touch with the Winston team and offer your CV to them, up to date CV resume and uh, along with your IELTS or PT certificate. So we will go from there. All right. Yeah. Apart from that, you need to look at your funding and uh, the currently uh, uh, if, if you need to have a full fee as well as the living cost, which Alan can mention how much you need. So Alan, would you mind just quickly uh, giving a short rundown for international student? What kind of funds they need fees plus living cost? Uh, yeah, so the, the way it works is that you uh, submit your visa application. Uh, when you submit the visa application, you will not yet have paid the fees, but you need to have obviously enough money to pay the fees later on. And also you need, um, as Hamid mentioned, living costs. So this is money that you have to um, support yourself in New Zealand and, you know, buy your uh, food and shelter, things like that. At the moment, it's calculated at uh, New Zealand uh, $15,000 for every year of study or $1,000. Um, we have indications that that's definitely going up to uh, $20,000 New Zealand per year of study. Um, so yeah, so as I said, you don't have to pay the, the tuition fee upfront, but uh, you will get to a stage what's called approval in principle. If all requirements are met, they will approve your visa in principle. Then you transfer the money from your bank account to the New Zealand Institute. They will issue a receipt and at that point you can get the visa. So basically you need to have enough money for the tuition fees and you need to have um, 15 to 20 thousand dollars. I would recommend 20 thousand dollars per year of um, living cost funds. Um, that would be for the student. Yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you, Alan. And uh, one more thing to all the students uh, who is attending this webinar that New Zealand is the only country which is giving the option to the international students to transfer their tuition fee once they have the visa approval, not before that. Before that, you just have to give the bank statement, as Alan mentioned, that you have enough money to pay your fee and living cost. You only transfer the fee once your visa is approved in principle. But if you look at Canada or uh, USA or any other part of the world, you have to pay your fee upfront then only you can uh, apply your visa, so which actually is a big difference and uh, you are more secured in the terms of New Zealand uh, education. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Yes. So Anuradha, I think we have answered your question. So we are moving on to the next one now uh, from another user SLCPI. I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm not uh, you, your name is not there. So a uh, high, what would be the age limit? So again, there is no age limit, but it lo should look genuine. Like, for example, you if you're coming in the age of 55 years to study masters, that might not work. I yeah. think you really need to be uh, more um, genuine and that, yes, this is the right time for me to study. And if someone at the age of 60 is considering about bachelor's degree or a PG diploma, that might be a bit of problem here. So think, that is case by case basis. If you can I mean, prove, we, we can have a look. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I think that that, that question was asked when we were mentioning the residency. So I think we answered the oh, age yeah. limits. Yeah, during the residency part, um, but uh, we didn't answer the minimum education requirements. Um, I think uh, very quickly to touch on that, and uh, Ellen can correct me if I'm wrong. And that's no such thing as a minimum education requirement because everything based on points, right? So it's just different education level equals different points. Uh, for residents, yes, it's um, basically there are health requirements, character requirements. Um, for you, you generally have to have a, a job offer. Uh, in certain circumstances, you don't, but you could basically say you need to have a, a skilled job offer. It has to be skilled work, so you can't be a supermarket worker, of course. Um, in terms of education, uh, what it, it happens if there's a points based system, so you get points for your work experience, your education and other what they call capacity building factors, your potential contribution to the New Zealand economy. Uh, so obviously the qualification counts for a lot of points. 
um, you know, it can count for um, 50 points or more. Uh, so definitely uh, your education, uh, including getting a New Zealand qualification gives you bonus points. So it is uh, quite an important step towards residence, your educational background, including if you have a strong educational background in New Zealand. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, sure. I mean, I can answer the PhD one and then you can answer the level four one. OK, so yeah, we do help with the PhD, but um, there are different ways at different levels. We have a full pack PhD support package, which is four thousand New Zealand dollars. And uh, as a, if you are very capable of doing um, your uh, application, you may don't want to. You may not want to choose that one. If you um, um, can do most of the jobs, I, actually, as a PhD candidate, you should be able actually do that. And uh, we can. You can identify us as your um, agent, so we can basically support you while you do. The, you need to do the most of the uh, communication, and you need to write the uh, proposal. Everything. And uh, we at the same time help you to communicate with the uh, uh, university, and uh, we will we'll look at how what your profile is. If uh, it's a straightforward uh, application uh, for your visa, we may uh, do the student visa uh, application for free, but we will charge extra money uh, or uh, fees for uh, if there are partners, etc. So. To answer the question quickly is, yeah, we do uh, coordinate and facilitate because we are the education uh, representative of all eight universities in New Zealand and all you uh, on all other ITPs. Someone mentioned um, uh, later like uh, WinTech, EIT, whoever. Yes, we represent all of them. OK, so that's a PhD. And so we move on. Uh, Hamid, if you can answer about the level four, I think that's the level four from UB the uh, certificate, what's the minimum requirement? They, uh, they can even start with O levels. Um, they can just start with O levels. That's that's not a level four is quite a low level to start with. As long as you have O level passed, you and uh, you have got IELTS uh, uh, five band overall, and no less than I think 4.5 in each because this is just level four. You can just, just get on to the level four. So uh, for more details, just get in touch with the instant team. And I'm moving on to the next uh, question. Uh, it is a must to do a level nine program for the spouse to, I think this is to Alan to answer that. What is the requirement to get a full time work visa for the spouse from Siteshi, Alan? Yeah, hi Siteshi. So um, uh, broadly speaking, yes, uh, people in a level nine or 10 uh, course can support uh, their spouse. Again, that level nine is master's, level 10 is PhD. So master's and PhD students can support uh, their partner on a work visa. As um, Hamid touched on earlier, if you do a course that is listed on the long term skill shortage list and the course is level seven or eight, so that's a uh, bachelor's, uh, certain diplomas and graduate diplomas and postgraduate diplomas, Level seven or eight courses on the long term skill shortage list may also support their partner on a work visa. Um, if neither of those apply, you may have an option to support a partner on a visitor visa. So that's uh, an option too. Once they're in New Zealand, if they get a job offer, they can apply for a work visa with the job offer. Mm. Um, as for children, um, you know, I don't want to make the answer too long, but basically it's some. Um, um, uh, uh, visitor visas for younger children are appropriate. They can be supported by a student. Uh, if the partner holds a work visa, then the partner's work visa can support a student visa for the child. So the, stu the adult student supports the partner for a work visa. The partner on their work visa supports their child on a student visa. Um, so that's domestic. Yeah, yeah. So domestic student. I should be clear about that. Thank you, Frank. Uh, that would be a domestic student visa. So the the school, the child can attend school and they pay domestic tuition fees the same as any New Zealand child. So it would not be yeah. international school tuition fees. All right. Thank you, Alan. Uh, so the same user is asking the next question. What would be the minimum requirement requirements for nursing? So uh, I think for nursing, it depends what uh, level are you looking at? If you if you are asking your bachelor's of nursing, you must have IELTS seven in each band. With the, I think I'm sure they will ask for the A levels. If it is O level, you must have some sort of experience in health. They might consider, but IELTS academic seven each is must or the equivalent. I think nursing is just IELTS. You have to have IELTS for for because it's a requirement by the New Zealand Nursing Council. And if you have already done bachelor's of nursing in Sri Lanka, you might be able to get some cross credits 
and you might get a shortened bachelor's degree in New Zealand probably of two years because they will give you some cross credits. Mm -hmm. And if you're asking me about graduate diploma in nursing, again, you need seven each band and the, that diploma will uh, require bachelor of nursing recognized in New Zealand uh, to continue to level seven. All right. So yeah, moving also the next, masters. Uh, Sorry. There's also a master's of nursing yeah. require again the bachelor's with IL7 in each. Yeah, recognize yeah. bachelor's. Of nursing. Get in touch, and we, and, we there's a different ways we can manage that. So yeah, yeah. So for Go more on, information, please. you can reach to Winston team. We will we will talk about uh, in more detail. So does EIT provide master's programs? Are DV asking? Does EIT provide master's? Yes, they do. DV, I think I did mention uh, during my last conversation. Yes, they do offer. If you are interested. And meeting the academic and English requirements, you can definitely apply for that because they need a bachelor's degree in a business management or something in a similar area with the IELTS 6.5, no less than six band in each module. You can definitely apply for that and you can start studying this online for now and then continue to the main program once the border open. All right, uh, the next answer is WinTech Fall. Yes, we work with all the institutions as Frank mentioned. Today we are only talking about limited numbers because we can't just talk about everything in this presentation, but we do work with all the New Zealand institutions, you name it. All right, thank you, Siteshi. Uh, again, Anuradha, sir, how about civil engineering? Same thing, yes, civil engineering is available too in the uh, either public institutions or in the uh, universities. There will be huge fees difference. Uh, because universities are more expensive than the public institute. So if you have those kind of funds and finance available, we can look at that. OK, and uh, do you provide skilled migration program? Well, we don't provide skilled migration program, but we do provide service for the skilled migration program if you are eligible for more details on that, uh, because we are now running uh, out of time. You can get in touch with Winston team. And they will tell you, they will connect you with Alan, who is there present here now with your specific inquiry, and we can look at that. All right, Manoj, I hope I answered you. Sorry, we are just running out of time, so I'm just quickly doing it. Uh, sir, I have done a business commerce general degree, thesis degree without research. Could I apply for? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, you can definitely apply for a master's here as long as you have to holding a bachelor's degree with IELTS 6.5, no less than six in each. Uh, we can get you into the masters in business or any relevant financial masters in uh, finance, MSc in finance, MBA, any relevant degree. No problem at all. All right. And uh, next question: As a practicing veteran, veterinarian, how can I proceed with masters? Ah, uh, <clears throat> again, as long as you're meeting the academic requirement, I think if you are practicing it already, will will makes things easier. But you still have to meet academic and the English requirement. There will be no um, uh, actually waiver on that. So as long as you are holding a bachelor's degree and you're practicing it, you can definitely look at the higher education options as, as a postgraduate options in the universities. All right. Um, <clears throat> so what is the age limit for level seven bachelor's degree? Please answer because I'm 32. That's fine. You are quite young. Andy, you can definitely do that. There's no problem. You can get into the um, bachelor's degree, there is no problem, but you need to show us what you've been doing after your O level or A level. If you have a sort of experience, you need to provide us all the evidences for the school for that admission to make them satisfied. We can definitely get into the bachelor degree. Age is not a problem here as long as you have some evidences. So anybody who is asking for any gap that, sir, I have this gap or that gap. This is only a gap if you've not been doing anything. If you've been working, that's not a gap, guys. We can definitely take a look at it get case to case basis depending on the evidences you have. I can send it to the school that whatever you've been doing, if they are satisfied, that's not a gap. And regarding the uh, your student visa policy and immigration point of view that Alan will let you know what he will require from you guys to show off that you guys been doing something. You know, you need to have some hard evidences for that. All right, so next question. Um, if I start studying masters in New Zealand, as you mentioned, spouse can apply for work visa. Is the child to allow to enter New Zealand? I think Alan answered this already, isn't it, Alan? Yeah, the child can enter New Zealand. If they're young, they're not yet school age, come on a visitor visa. If they are school age, they can come on a domestic student visa paying domestic school tuition fees, but they must be supported by the student's partner. The student cannot support their child on a domestic student visa directly unless it's a PhD course. 
So generally speaking, it is the partner of the student who supports their child on a domestic student visa. Very young children, no problem, just come on a visitor visa. Hmm. All right, so basically you, you try to say that they, mu they must have a partner who can support the free education for the kid. If they have the partner is not there, a lone student can't do it. Uh, yes, uh, unless it's a PhD student, a PhD student can support their child directly for a domestic student visa. Lower than PhD, right. only a visitor visa, unless the, the child comes as an international school student. So that's obviously much higher tuition fees. That's another option. But normally what happens is that the student comes, uh, they bring their, their partner on a work visa if the partner is eligible for a work visa. And then uh, the uh, child can be a domestic student. So there's different options basically. Um, visitor visa yeah. if they're very young. International student visa if uh, you don't, your partner doesn't qualify for a work visa. International student visa for your child, or a domestic student visa if you meet the requirements. See, yeah, that's clear. All right, thanks, Alan. But for more details, if you have still more questions, get in touch with the team, and then they will pass on more questions to us to make sure that you are satisfied with that. All right, so um, quickly, what is the ma best master degree for BBA accounting special degree holder? There is no age limit. As long as I mentioned, you have the evidences what you've been doing for BBA accounting. They can always look at master of finance, PG diploma in finance, PG diploma in business, be masters in business. And the cost is all depend on which institution are you choosing? If it is a public institution, that degree generally cost around uh, $33,000 to $35,000. It's a one and a half year program. And if you are looking at the university, that goes up to around probably $50,000. So it all depends what institution are you choosing and what kind of course are you choosing? It, is it a PG diploma or it is a master? So cost vary. All right, Srilal, uh, we will uh, definitely help you. You can always get in touch with team for more in more detailed uh, answer. All right, I have completed MBA from Tushita. How about employment opportunities? Well, we are we are not employment or something expert, uh, but if you have done MBA, uh, we all can tell you you can get a post study work visa. You have to look for a job. You can go to um, there is one website in which you can put. Uh, your designation, I think I'm sure. What is the website name, Frank, in which they can look at the job chances? The government website. Uh, Careers.gov.nz. Yeah, so yeah, you can careers. go to this website. I think your designation. Yeah, I think there's a, a, a question. Probably the, the, the person already completed an MBA in Sri Lanka. I guess if you are asking um, employment directly from Sri Lanka right. to uh, New Zealand, First, we can't help uh, directly on that. Secondly, um, it, it will be very hard, and, and to be honest, um, you know, we, we can't really uh, comment too much. Um, but of course, we can look at uh, how we can help you to get another qualification in New Zealand once you come to New Zealand to study, and that will be very different. For people directly finding a job overseas is very hard. Yeah, that's very hard. All right. Um, next from Hishan. Hey, let me know if there is 20s education gap after all can we have any option to apply for academic well as i earlier mentioned if you've been working you have all the evidences available and you have a genuine reason for a further study you have a need of that education or degree you can prove that in your statement of purpose along with all the evidences that you've been working in this industry that's not a gap we can still consider you for a master's program or a higher program depending on your eligibility, sir. So you, you can get in touch with Winston team with your CV and we will go from there. And then again, from the same user, um, appreciate information, uh, skill in migration and what would be the age limit? I think it's a same, same user asking. Uh, I think I highly recommend this uh, uh, user if you can get in touch with the team uh, specifically for all your answers related to skilled migration, because this is a very, very important and complicated thing to do. So I think I don't want to or anybody from us do not want to answer anything in rush to you. So please get in touch and uh, we he, they will connect you to Alan and we will start from there. Sorry about that. And uh, Siteshi, why doing a level nine program in IT enable more chance in finding a job? Frank. Yeah, of course, and it depends on what your background and uh, uh, IT in New Zealand is a very hot area as in many other countries 
and IT or computer science. So uh, if you have the IT or computer science backgrounds already and study another extra uh, master degree, will definitely give you a good chance. Of course, um, we're talking about IT is very practical. So um, I can't say someone just studied and without any practical skills and they can find a job, maybe a bit difficult, uh, but with very good, strong skills. Uh, New Zealand is a shot of uh, IT um, uh, skilled talents. That's why uh, Hamid mentioned even a bachelor in computer science or any software engineering um, is considered as a long term skill shortage on the long term skill shortage list. So, which means in New Zealand, uh, those jobs are high demand in New Zealand. Yeah, hope I answered the question. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I think this is the second last question. Hi, Ellen. If I want to start level eight and level nine one year program online by willing to come to New Zealand to complete the rest once the border open, yeah. can we use any sort of account to pay tuition fee? And is it compulsive to keep it six months? And how if it, it will affect the visa? Alan, I think he's asking you basically, I I, uh, do we have to have a funds there back in the bank account for six months? to apply for visa. That's the first thing. And another, I think he's trying to ask uh, if he start this program. Uh, yeah, I think, OK, so you can start this program online. There are no funding requirement for online program. All you have to pay the tuition fee and start the program. But when you get onto your uh, real student visa application for immigration New Zealand, at that time you definitely need funds. And how and in what kind of form Alan can explain? Yeah, so I, I, I should men mention quite briefly as well that uh, I know this wasn't really central to the question, but for post-study work visas, there is a requirement that uh, you need to be uh, onshore if the course is level seven or higher. It has to be on onshore for 30 weeks or more, which is about two and a half years. So people starting their course online and coming to New Zealand later, they can qualify for the post-study work visa. Uh, people doing the entire course online, that could be a problem for post- uh, Sorry, um, I think Alan- ability. Um, you yeah, mentioned 30, I, I think it's 30 weeks. 30 weeks, yeah. What did I did I say? Yes. 30 months? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. sorry, 30, not 30 months, no, 30 weeks. <laughs> um, 30 weeks, uh, not 30 months. Um so uh but going to the, the question itself, I mean the, the area of funds for student visas, it's quite complicated, so I won't go into into any great detail. Uh the ideal situation is that you have uh a stable savings with six months history, uh, no recent deposits. That that would be the ideal situation. If there are recent deposits, uh, you need to explain where the deposits came from. Cash deposits can be a problem. Uh, I mean, I'll, that's about all I, I can say, really. Uh, as far as the um, tuition fee, um, yes, it should come from the uh, account that you nominated. And once you, once you transfer the fee, they often ask for a, uh, a transfer receipt to show that the where the money came from. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, to be, to be clear, yeah, right. 30 weeks, not 30 months. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So uh, the next from Tushita need to know doing PhD business management would help in a career development in New Zealand. Frank, would you like to take uh, it? If you want to, actually your ultimate goal is to find a job in New Zealand. No one would do a PhD to find a job. A uh, PhD and doctor yeah. degree is for you to do a research. And I know in many countries, especially in Asia countries, the is a hyper inflation on the qualification, and you have to go up and up to in terms uh, in, in order to find a job. But in New Zealand, it's still different, and uh, sometimes PhD may not help you find a job if that's your goal. It may actually um, not help you and provide some negative if you because you you overqualify for for actually lots of simple jobs. So if you actually just want to find a job, I would just go um, suggest to go for a master degree in a more practical mm. area as such, and there will be um, shorter um, study. PhD can be three years or longer. And uh, yeah, in terms of uh, time and cost, um, probably master would do a better job um, to help your career uh, in New Zealand. But of course, if, if your goal is to do research uh, in business field, of course you can do PhD and doctor, but uh, that's a completely different direction. All right, thank you, Frank. I hope yeah. Tushita uh, will have a satisfactory answer. So last question from A.R. Muhammad, what is the best master regarding food technology and food science in Christchurch? I think um, 
I'm not very sure in Christchurch, but food science is very popular at Messy University, which is in Auckland and Palmerston North. But I'm not sure about Christchurch. Frank, do you have any idea about Victoria? Uh, uh, sorry. Which university? Uh, Canterbury. No, I think food science and the uh, Auckland University is food science and uh, the Massey University is food technology. And uh, I think depends on which area. It's, it's actually quite a different direction. Um, you might know if you study this, you may know more than me about the, direct, the difference between food science and food technology. And the, yeah, two major universities are um, University of Auckland and Massey University in Christchurch. That's not what I'm aware. I don't think Canterbury has very um, in specifically in food science or technology, but uh, we can do a bit further research and you can get in touch and we can help you. And uh, uh, in terms of that, I think uh, Lincoln and Canterbury are the two universities in Christchurch. Um, they may have similar but not exact uh, area. So I'm sorry, I can't um, give you a clearer answer than that. So basically, I think we can look at the Massey University and University of Auckland, which are very popular for food science and food technology. I have yes. personally been to their food science and food technology lab last year, got the opportunity. I really right. got impressed. They are the best, the Massey University. And uh, you get in touch with the team and we will go from there. And again, we have one more question. Demand for supply chain management masters. Well, I think procurement, uh, supply chain is relates to procurement. Alan, uh, is the procurement comes under long term skill shortage list? I think it is there. Can you quickly have a look? I think they have a uh, good. Is, uh, sorry, uh, let me quickly answer. And it is procurement management is on the skill shortage list, but the qualification, uh, no one's uh, uh, offering the qualification. Uh, that is something to do with the UK thing. So. Uh, in terms of the demand of supply chain management, uh, what I can see is it is definitely high, especially during the pandemic era, but it doesn't mean everyone who graduates will be guaranteed a job. So, I mean, the demand for skilled uh, people in New Zealand in general is very high, and they are, they are in some certain areas probably higher, like a teacher or nurse or whatever is qualified with uh, registration. But all the other things, if you are skilled and with a good background, will, will be very um, um, likely find a good job. But we can't really tell you too much more than that. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I basically, guess, yeah. I just, it is person to person. Basically, it's personal circumstances of someone to okay. get a job in a particular field. We can't really comment on that. But uh, I think if you are qualified enough, you definitely can get a job. I, I can I can say, but uh, it is all all person to person and in what market and environment he is. It's hard for us to comment on that. And the yeah. last question we have IELTS band for the partner. I think partner doesn't need any English language uh, because their visa are basically based on the relationship, not uh, and no, they have nothing to do with the academic part. I believe, Alan. Uh, uh, skills. Yeah, for residents there would be, but we I don't think we'll get into that. Yeah, for residents. Yeah, if it is are, for skill migration, uh, they, they haven't really properly mentioned here. I think if it is for skilled migration, Alan Alan is confirming definitely they require. But uh, if it is for the just for the partner of a student, they don't need any English, I believe. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think we are already right. about half half an hour over time, and uh, thank yeah, you for yeah. all the so questions. We really want to keep answering more and more, um, but I guess uh, everyone has other plans. And uh, um, yeah, um, no, just for the wrap up, I would like to say, guys, wh whoever is really looking or taking seriously New Zealand uh, for uh, studying in New Zealand part, if they're really serious, they should start studying online. For more details, get in touch with Winston. And hopefully you guys will be here by mid next year. Who knows? So, but if you are not doing anything and just waiting for border opening, and then I'm sorry, there might be very much less chances. You might be coming here by end of this year or something. I don't know. But you please start uh, taking the online study seriously. Recently, the people got nominated who've been studying online and they're coming here in March this year. I mean, next year. So please uh, uh, start inquiring about online options. Let us know. We will definitely will help you. And thanks yeah. for your time and the energy you gave us to attend this uh, seminar webinar today. So um, I would like to thanks my colleagues Alan and Frank 
for helping me because actually this is kind of uh, they are helping me in my job being a uh, business development manager i am the one who basically look after i mean sri lanka india nepal and those regions but uh, um, anyways thank you very much amanishi would you like to say something before we come yes. to an end thank you very much for the choose new zealand team for joining up with us today for taking the time out of your day and explaining the criteria the application process i mean it was really thorough and i hope everyone who joined benefited out of it so we are hoping to have a similar webinar within another 3 months of time with choose new zealand so you can um, you can contact us i think you can see the pdf contact details on your screen so if you uh, would like to send us your updated cv like mr hamid mentioned because it's uh, person to person it does vary so the information does vary we, have, we will have to take a look at your cv and uh, we will communicate accordingly and we would be actually happy to help you out so yes i would actually uh, again i would like to thank choose new zealand for um taking the time and doing this webinar with us so thank you and i would um like to greet you a good day so it's good evening to new zealand and yes um so yes i would like to conclude the webinar okay no. thank All right. you guys thank you guys thank you. have a good day sure. yeah. have a good okay. day bye bye